I'm Carl Windrill, and I've been a member of the LJML department since 2002. As a young kid, little kid, we moved to uh, South Florida, to Pompano Beach, Florida, and that's where I really spent my growing up years. Went from there, earned a basketball scholarship to Olivet Nazarene College, and uh, graduated from Trevecca Nazarene College, actually, and from thence went to uh, University of Chicago, earned an MA in American Literature, and have a PhD from New York University. We came in 2002 for the fall. Since then, since 2004, Rhonda and I have been taking students to London. And I would have to say that uh, living with those 19 to 22 students every fall, living in residence with them, eating breakfast, eating dinner, going to plays, concerts, theater experiences, traveling around the UK, going to Paris, going to Edinburgh, going to Wales, you really get to know each other. I have uh, been overwhelmed at the close of a class, that is, at the end of a quad or the end of a semester, at the genuine sincerity of students who come up and thank me for the class. And uh, for me, that's what teaching has all been about, is the relationship that you have with a student in the classroom. And so much of the time, I'm in the classroom because I want to learn too. Life is a series of uh, graduations, I think. Uh, I'm looking at retirement not as uh, a cessation, but as another graduation. Rhonda and I have felt for a long time, because we visit, a calling to go live in Europe. Two of our former students have set up a very interesting tent maker ministry there. And so uh, we're going to finish London in uh, December of 2017. And then at the end of February, we plan to go move to Croatia. In many of my classes, as students might recall, one of the things that I have shared with them is that when you're in class, and sometimes you're asked a question and maybe you've been a little inattentive, and so you're unsure of the answer, I've said, well then, simply answer by saying, Jesus. It might cause the instructor to back off a little bit and say, well, what, what about Jesus? And in that time, you've been able to think a little bit about, you know, how do you respond? And so then your response is, well, it reminds me of something that Jesus said. Now, that's not just a strategy for the classroom. I think one of the most important things that you can learn is that once you leave Point Loma and when you're confronted with a problem or there's not a ready solution, then go back to your default mechanism when you're in my class and say, oh, Jesus, yeah, that makes me think of Jesus. And the follow-up to that is, it reminds me of something that he once said. And for me, this is a corollary to uh, what many of you probably heard anyway, that uh, Jesus is the answer. Dan Croy, I'm a professor at the Fermanian School of Business. I grew up in Kansas City, uh, a suburb of that called Shawnee Mission, Kansas. My education was, uh, I graduated from Shawnee Mission North High School in 1969. In 73, I graduated from Mid-American Nazarene University. Um, then I got a master's degree in psychology and counseling from um, University uh, Northern Colorado. Ten years later, I got a, a doctorate degree from Vanderbilt University. As soon as my doctorate was done, I got a job with Hospital Corporation of America that was there, a huge organization that owned and operated and managed hospitals around the mostly southeastern part of the United States. Then I started uh, interviewing people, saying I wondered if there was an opportunity to m meld together the, um, the concepts, uh, concepts of, of management and leadership and include that in the education and preparation for ministers. I got a bunch of, well, not in not, not our lifetime, and I'm not sure that'll ever happen. And, and I called an old friend, Bruce Schooling, who was here as the dean of the School of Business. And I said, am I, am I just dreaming? Am I barking up a tree here? What is the deal? And he said, no, this is the place for you. Interviewed and I got offered a position, and uh, it's been an enjoyable ride, 15 years. When the light bulb comes on and you see it, it's a um, truly wonderful thing. Um, a time when I felt the spirit really close was praying for students um, here in this office, um, having some students pray for me uh, regarding some of my health issues. I love to hear students um, talk about the way they were raised, what belief systems they had, and what value systems they owned, and uh, what that was all about. 
and uh, now that they've had some business courses under their belt, um, can you see that it's not about the money? That uh, before profit is people. You'll never go wrong treating your people right, and then they'll treat the customer right. This next next chapter is going to be filled with um, health initiatives. I've got a recumbent bike that I love to ride. I've got a golf cart and golf clubs and hope that I can get my swing back. I'm going to have a, a routine of, uh, of physical activity. I'm going to move to, my wife and I have built a house in uh, Goodyear, Arizona, but basically I want to be riding. Pay attention really closely. You have enough you do enough, you are enough. You are equipped and enabled to do whatever God calls you or leads you into. I'm Diana Corleone, professor of history. I grew up, uh, studied abroad when I was in high school. I think that changed my life forever. I got a wider perspective and so I fell in love with European studies. That's what I majored in in college. And then years later, I returned to Germany to work as a missionary with uh, American servicemen and also German students. I was finishing up graduate school at University of California, San Diego, and I received a call one day from Ron Kirkamo. They were looking for someone to fill in part-time for some world history teaching, and I came down and met the faculty. Ron Kirkamo and Rick Kennedy brought me to Point Loma to teach for a year as an adjunct, and then I was named to a tenure-track physician after that. I think some of the highlights of my teaching have been on the international travel we've done. I did a Euro term from in Vienna in 2001. We did a six-week backpack trip through Germany and Austria. We took only our backpacks, traveled with your rail, and stayed in hostels. We went, we landed in Cologne, started in Cologne, went down the Rhine River. Being here on campus, I've loved the small group classes, the intimate exchange with students, and the ability to coach students with research and writing. I think some of the best times have been the unscripted times, when students ask a question that take us down a, a trail of thought that's not really attached to the curriculum, but either a personal experience or an interpretation uh, of, of scriptures that I particularly enjoy will come to mind. Well, I'm not over with my scholarly work yet. I have another Fulbright grant to go to Serbia next year to continue research on a book project. I hope to publish at least two more books, and then we'll also go on to hopefully write some historical fiction. Uh, there are so many good stories in history and so many fascinating people that I never have time to talk about in class that have captured my imagination. I think it would be very important if you could take time to write a letter to yourself. Uh, write down who you hope to be and what you hope to accomplish by the time you're 30 and then maybe one for yourself at 40 and 50 and keep those sealed and see when you get to that age how you've changed, how your values have changed, how your life has taken a course that maybe you didn't expect but is still very wonderful and uh, use that to advise your own kids and understand the next generation. I'm Karen Sangren. I chair the Art and Design Department. Grew up in Temple City and then went to Pasadena City College and then transferred to Pasadena College. And it actually moved the final year that I, I was there. I was on my way to class one day when my teacher asked me what I'd like to do with my art major. And I had said that I'd like to be a high school art teacher. And he said, have you ever thought about teaching in a Christian college? And it was a life-changing question. In chapel one day, our chaplain, Reuben Welch, asked uh, anyone that was thinking that they were being called into Christ uh, full-time Christian service to come to the altar that morning, and that seemed to be, you know, a call for me, too. Uh, so I moved with the school and uh, then started teaching as an adjunct while I was working on my master's degree at San Diego State. And so I came back in 1978 and then uh, started as a very young chair in a very small program at the time. 
you know, I just want so much for our students to love Jesus as they're walking out the door and bringing that into their lives uh, and being the best artists they possibly can be, the best teachers they can be, the best designers that they can be. The, it's just been such an amazing opportunity to be able to be at Point Loma, but also be really connected in the public schools as well. Uh, for a period of time, I taught homeless kids every Friday morning, did that for eight years down at the St. Vincent de Paul Center, and just absolutely loved that time. It was wonderful to be able to help children find a safe space in creating art while they were you know, in transition in their lives. Uh, over the last 12 years, we've had 330 uh, Point Loma uh, art education students teaching. And uh, as we kind of round out this semester, we will have taught over 9,000 children on the Mexican border. I get a chance to move between the classrooms and see our students at work. I'm always so proud of them. Oh, I'm always so proud of them. You know, I think of the interactions with students in class. I love watching them discover they can be artistic. Uh, to, you know, after I retire, I'm really hoping to teach little kids, but I also I'm hoping to uh, work with the San Diego Unified School District with more involvement on a district level and make art. I mean, how much better could it be than that? <laughs> Anchor your, in, your life in Jesus Christ. There's nothing more important than that. It will take you through, you know, the best of times and the worst of times, and it will just make a, a huge difference for your entire life. Yeah. I'm Nancy Pitts. I'm an adjunct faculty in the Family Consumer Sciences Department, and then I'm also the chaplain for the graduate students at the Mission Valley campus. I grew up in Atwater, California, I did my undergraduate work in a very small Church of God school called Warner Pacific College in Portland, Oregon. And then after that, many years after that, I went to Seattle Pacific University and got my master's in marriage and family therapy. The way that I ended up in Point Loma was I followed my husband here. I was really happy about that because at that time, four of our five children, actually all five, were living in the LA area, so nice to be close. I got to know Kay Wilder and um, she asked me to do a family and parenting class and so that's how I started in this department and I really enjoyed that and it was, it was great. I loved the students, loved the subject. But when I first came here I talked to Mary Paul and asked her if there was any volunteer positions available and four or five months later that she said they had an opening at Mission Valley for a grad chaplain, and I jumped right on that, and I, I have loved that. Uh, a memory that stands out to me, probably the most unusual thing I did as a chaplain was I had an MBA student come in and say, would you please pray for us? Um, my wife needs a doula, a birth coach, because we can't afford one, and I said, I can do that. <laughs> So I did. Um, it was very interesting. They were Russian Orthodox and it was in a birthing center and there were icons all around the bathtub that she birthed in and candles and it was just a, a very special experience. We have a lot of different plans for when we're done here, but um, we have, of course, a lot of traveling we want to do and some home exchanges in Europe and different places. and. So we do that. We want to do a lot of different volunteer things and, of course, be involved with our kids and their kids. And um, we go to Southeast Nazarene and are involved there, so we'll continue that. I teach a college-age Bible study on Wednesday nights at our home and want to continue that to get my college-age fix because <laughs> I love this age. I guess the thing that I... I wish I'd have known when I was 20 was that um, it all gets redeemed, <laughs> that God uses absolutely everything for our good, and I've gone through some really tough things in my life, and it's so amazing to see how God will take that and use it not only for my good but for other people's good. and. Um, I think I would have been more relaxed <laughs> if I just known, you know, it's all good 
eventually and maybe eventually is eternity but it is all good. I'm Rhonda Rice Wendrell and I'm a professor here in the Department of Communication and Theater and I direct the London program for Point Loma. I was born in Oklahoma City and most of my school years we were in Kansas City but I feel most at home in San Diego where we have been now for 15 years and when that worked out and we moved here I just felt right away that this was where I probably should have been all along. <laughs> uh, we had had really exciting, active, you know, busy lives at Point Lone at uh, Eastern Nazarene College and had built a theater and developed a communication arts de department. And our kids grew up there, so that was home to them. They had great lives, you know, in the Boston area. But then as they were getting out of the house and we were both at the same time feeling kind of this release that we had done our best there and we, you know, given it a good shot, but that it would probably be okay with God for us to do something different. So we started kind of thinking about it and praying about it. And about that time, good friends of ours out here at Point Loma, uh, they contacted us and said, why don't you come out and talk to us about some things that you could do? Well, since we live with students in London, you know, most falls, we're just constantly having adventures. And that's a different kind of relationship and such a privilege to have those experience with students. So, plus I have a million funny stories about myself and about them. <laughs> One of my most memorable and fun <laughs> productions to direct here at Point Loma was Godspell. Godspell was part of my dissertation at New York University and I had interviewed and worked with all the people involved in that original production and so it seemed like it would be really interesting to look at it again you know this many years later and uh, to see what God had in mind for us. And so I think the cast and certainly myself uh, all of us felt like uh, as we read the scriptures and we looked at the stories and we tried to think how to convey the joy of the gospel you know, to a contemporary audience, that it all came to life for us in a, in a brand new way. Love the Lord God with all of your heart, mind, and strength. And make sure that He is in control and is guiding every decision that you make. And once you do that, you will be amazed at the life he will create for you. And the plan he has, which is so much better than anything you could even imagine, that's absolutely been my experience. And then another thing I would suggest is that once you have committed everything to Jesus, then figure out what you are most passionate about, what you would get up every day and go do even if you weren't being paid. And once you've figured that out, then qualify yourself so that you can actually support yourself and your family and you can give back resources to the Lord's work from the income that you do make. But the most important thing, no matter what you make, is to do something that you love so you are motivated to and thrilled with the work that you get to do. And then finally, and this is probably the most important thing, I would strongly recommend that you skip and dance more. Both things will make you feel better. Dance is scriptural, okay? And I just think we need to let our silly selves out more. We need to laugh and we need to let the joy of the Lord kind of overflow out of our lives and spill on to everybody else. So, dropping the mic, that's all I got because I have a lot of skipping to do. <laughs>